Yeah. Well, I'd hate for them to, you know, have do a bunch of orders and yeah. take a bunch of money and then like <laughs> delay, delay. Yeah, you, you you know about that one. Yeah. Okay, so. Welcome to the January Omaha Linux Users Group. I'm John Larson. Hello. Should I email George? You're gonna email George for me. Tell him that we're streaming. No, I'd say no. He probably won't watch it streaming. Probably watch it later. Watch it later. Okay. This is the, this is the labor of the last two hours of my uh, day today. So hopefully something will come of it. So we were talking about Raspberry Pi. So those who don't know what it is, it's a single board computer, if you could call it that. It's the size of a credit card. It was in the fact or in the wiki. I'm trying to remember where the picture is. There it is. Actually, probably big as the middle wall. How big is it? It's a big wall. Well, with the Ethernet, it'll be as tall as the Ethernet shield on it. So, like, if you think of a standard Ethernet riser, yeah, that's what you'll get. Um, the B version will have Ethernet, and that's the thirty-five dollar one, but also has two fifty-six meg instead of one hundred and twenty-eight. But the idea is, you just plug it into the HDMI. And you power it with a micro USB plug like off your cell phone and your SD card's in it and that's it. I think it would be really cool to use, um, we have several displays in the lobbies. Stick that in the HDMI port, you got your wireless dongle on there, you have interactive displays for people when they come in. So imagine, oh, weather alert, it could scan the Noah's weather and change the display and say, you know, here's a radar picture, weather alert, people coming out of the elevator, they could see that. Maybe it would say, you know, here's where this tornado shelter is. It's gonna do everything you, you do with all those old crappy PCs now. Well, that's right. It's sucking too much power. Because, because you know, if there's a USB port on the TV, it'll provide the power for it. We don't really need a keyboard. It's powered by the USB port. Yeah. Does it do power over Ethernet? I do not believe it does. Well, it's kind of far for uh, Ethernet is kind of far away from the normal power port, so I think it does. Well, you just pull it off and have it up to the cable. You could do a breakout box next to it. Yeah. yeah. But this is all, all about getting it tiny. But you know, the idea is it's small enough, you just take it with you and you carry it to your friend's house and you plug it in. And or there's your computer. Or just take your SD card with your underwear. Yeah. Because they're mobile. Mm-hmm. Did they did they sell them with uh, uh boxes? no boxes yet? No. They're still in production. They have 10 beta boards that they finished. In fact, them, they found a little issue that they were hand modding the beta boards. <laughs> the production boards don't have that. They're going to be at CES. I'm going to try to meet up with him because I'm going there on Monday. So that'll be fun. So they were auctioning off the first 10 boards. So that's one of the completed boards right there. Well, what's that in the upper left? Is it it's two two pins to be IE? Uh, GPIO, I think is what it says. Yeah. What? It's an IO connector. Yeah, I figured that. Well, that looks what like two two USB right there. What kind of IO? So if you have a powered hub, you can run stuff. Now they're supposed to have a, a certain flash or SD card connector that's flush with the edge of the board, but they haven't been able to get any so far for the beta boards. Well, they could make that use a micro SD card. <laughs> well, that could be in the next revision. It's just that those are a lot more expensive than yeah. you know the other ones. With the card or the receptacle. No, no. Probably both. Cards are really expensive. They're like five Both. Times. I mean, 
Yeah, you could buy one and stick them in there, but you just use the adapter. I was at Radio Shack uh, yesterday, and it, uh, it, it was pretty cheap. SD or micro? Micro. How uh much? -huh. Uh, I you want to see it was under $20. Well, well, was it, does it right say what the HDMI output is on this? Is it you mean the display resolution? Yeah, is it 720 or? I think it is 720. Because you're right, that'd be really quite nice for running displays. You can add any supported USB microphone via hub. Five volts micro USB. Oh, yeah, it gives us be thirteen dollars. The minimum order quantity will be one unit. <laughs> no, we yeah, we're, we're adequately funded. Don't 70. want to take your money until we have finished hardware. The GPU binary also contains first state boot loaner. Let's see. Broadcom 2835. It will run off of four AA batteries. <laughs> will it run? Whatever. Armed V6. No, it will not run wine. Oh, Debian, darn. Fedora, and Arch will be supported from the start. The version of Fedora. Probably 13, because that's the latest Arch build. I mean the uh, ARM build. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they, they're going to add DOE. Originally, this fact suggested that Ubuntu would be supported for the issues with newer releases of Ubuntu and the ARM processor we're using. Ubuntu can't commit to supporting Raspberry Pi at the moment. So, not in the base device, but it's a very commonly requested feature, so we're examining options for rated release for PoE. What happens if I brick the device? You can restore the device by reflashing the SD card. Yeah. Or buy another. Or buy, well, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have any real writable ra uh, flash memory, so there's not much you could do to it. It's just sort of there. So you can just in the bind your. Uh, on the SD card. Yeah. Or the equivalent of BIOS. Wow. It's part of the bootloader. That's not uncommon. My, my, um, Oh, my pogo plug's kind of like that. To hack it, I had to change the bootloader. I mean, it's still reversible completely. I just unplug the drive, and it boots up like it normally does. But it boots into Arch, does all of its thing right now. In fact, my Sparkle Share actually is my pogo plug at home. That's where all this stuff is stored. It syncs out with Git. That was a previous presentation, wasn't it? November. No. Remember that? Because that's one that I had, had to miss. Okay. We have a learning incident here. I've never used this for presentation work. I have to do it tomorrow morning as well. So, Ooh. I love black and white. Do you have a question? Or are you just intensely listening? No, I'm listening. Okay. So what is it? Well, it has the ability to export and import audio streams over your network. Kind of like, oh, what's that? What is it? DAP was what Apple was using over port 3689. But this is essentially any stream that you could use. And I mean any stream. So if you're playing a video, it'll export the audio over the network to another device. Like VLC does. Yeah. AirTunes devices, I want to kind of play with that. I have a um, Airport Express, but I haven't done anything with it. It works. I've kept it in my backpack for years. I used it from time to time on trips, but now that I've got the Verizon MiFi, I don't really use it. So I'll have to try it because it's got the audio jack on it. In fact, I accidentally left it upstairs and meant to bring it down here for the presentation. 
there's a lot of AirTunes devices that are coming out. Um, I think Denon has one. Ankyo might be doing one. So that way you can authorize iTunes to play to that device, et cetera, et cetera. Does anybody do any streaming in their house at all? You got I, Airport Express. I was gonna. I was looked at buying a wireless speaker for my stereo. Mm -hmm. Put on my deck instead. I just wired some regular speakers out there and use the Airport Express. To mm. play your, uh, Before I started messing with this, I went out and bought a uh, a Logitech speaker. It was like an eighty dollar Logitech speaker, and you can plug it into a, a headphone jack. It comes with a dongle you can plug into your computer and the audio comes out over it. And it goes all the way up across my house. Or you can do Bluetooth to it, which you can't do all at once. You can only do one of them. But I thought, this is great. This is everything I want it to do. No problem. Well, I really haven't used it. It's like, do I really have a need case for this? Um, yeah, I do. There are times when I need it. It's pretty, it's, it's only about this big. They're advertising it as a speaker for tablets now try to increase the sales. But for $20 more, they sell a larger unit that has four speakers for each channel. You got three on the front and for each channel, and then one in the back for each channel. And that's very similar. It has uh, a three and a half in and a Bluetooth in. It doesn't have the little dongle. But it uses it doesn't it doesn't run as long as my my little one. The little one's like ten hours. The big one says six hours. If you take the plate off the back, it uses a cordless phone battery. At least you can change the battery out. They give you that. The smaller Logitech doesn't let you do it. Which you know, whatever. You can take it apart and do the same thing. And. Lately, when I've been doing my DAP sharing, it doesn't seem to work. I tell Rhythmbox, oh, hey, connect to that, my Mythbox that's advertising. And it just sort of says, oh, I can't connect. Can't connect. I should probably spend more time on it, but I haven't had a chance yet. I've taken to actually, here's the paranoia. You know, I've got my desktop, all the music's on that. And then I back it up to the Pogo plug. I back it up to the Mythbox. So there's two copies at the house. And I back it up to my desktop here at work. That's my third copy. Then I have a copy in my bag. Now that one's way out of date. But I mean, it's so simple with R-Sync to keep all this stuff up to date. You know it's also really simple? What? Music. Well, <laughs> that's the other thing is I already, what, I'm, what I've decided to do, and that's part of my New Year's resolutions this year, is to go through all my CDs and re-rip everything at a high bit rate and then upload them into Google Music. I said I was going to do that like 10 years ago. Still, still haven't done it yet? God, it takes forever. Well, I did uh, 40 albums so far. Not this year, but I started earlier in December. Well, you still have the music on your local, on, on your drive, so you can verify it right now. Yeah. Now you can just rip it once and just upload it never after. Well, I delete it. <laughs> no, you still have to. It, it'll take music out of Google Music. Really? Really? I found that out the hard way because I put a whole, I had a whole list of South by Southwest stuff in there and put that folder out. I moved the folder over to another location and like disappeared. So I don't know if that's what they're doing in terms of rights management or one. They really shouldn't do that. Not uploading. Um, but if I'm not running the program. If you, well, if you're not running the desk, the Google Music Manager, yeah. Probably. If you run it the one time, upload everything, then turn it off so it doesn't verify anything. But it, it deleted a whole bunch of stuff that I had on the system after I moved to another location. Because I don't want to try to keep two separate fol folders of music on my system. Yeah. The CD music and the other music. I don't know. I'm, I don't know what the songs that you just put your ISO images in terms of the songs and just upload them. Well, I got a friend of mine who does everything with flack. But then again, he has a tube amp, so. But you take your Fedora ISO, convert it to an away file, then you upload that to Fedora, that's to Google Music, and have it everywhere you need it. <laughs> you know, that's not unlike uh, using VHS tapes to store programs. Yeah. 
fun to try, but really hard in practice. Uh, yeah, why would you? Well, you never know. It's like storing your uh, pattern pattern in the transporter pattern buffer in Star Trek. <laughs> Bring you back out again. Oh, okay, so how do you do it? We are assume that you are using MDNS with the Avahi daemon in your house. You need to have 4713 open on your firewall. This is not an IANA recognized port for Pulse Audio. That's just the one they use. Uh, for this demonstration, I just have the firewalls turned off because it's a lot easier to try to figure that out than punching stuff through. There are a couple of uh, packages you'll need. One is the Pulse Audio Module Zero Conf and the PA Prefs. Ubuntu, you only need PA prefs. There are a couple extras like the VU meter and the volume control. Those are kind of fun to have. So the PA prefs looks like this. You don't, you can't, normally you just, you know, you right click on the speaker and you get this. So the prefs kind of help you with that a little bit. I don't want to give too much away right now. So what do you need set? Well, you're going to have to have, once you get them installed, you're going to need to have these turned on. So number one, make discoverable Pulse Audio Network sound devices available locally. So that's like telling what, you know, your stuff. And there's the Apple one for AirTunes. Trademarks, Apple Inc. registered, blah, 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 blah. I think that's kind of funny. Then you have your network server settings. So enable network access to the local sound device. So here I am publishing my sound device. I'm going to allow other machines on the LAN to discover the local sound devices. And I'm not going to require any authentication. I'm not exactly sure how the authentication piece works on this. It doesn't pop up and ask you for a password. There's no place for you to put a password. Maybe it's in the config file. I don't know. There's some stuff for a DLNA, UMP, and P, but I haven't gotten into that yet. I've tried a little bit. The multicast stuff, I haven't, I've turned on, but I really haven't used yet. Supposedly, you can do everything at once to multiple machines. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But the one important thing is I have it set up for local loopback so that it pushes the audio out back out to my local speakers. So I'm not just like suddenly all the music's upstairs and I can't hear it. And then you can say add a virtual output device for simultaneous output on all local sound cards. That's kind of fun because if you have a USB headset and a USB speaker and a regular speaker and you say that, all of them have audio at the exact same time. Does it keep them synced pretty well? Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, the old days of Pulse Audio and the timing back in the Fedora 8 and 9 days is pretty much gone. It's gotten a lot better. I mean, a lot of people used to get angry. That, that was the big thing about Ubuntu is it like, sounds broken. Well, get rid of Pulse Audio and it'll be fixed. Well, they weren't, the Ubuntu wasn't uh, putting the patches in that people had put in to Pulse Audio to fix the problems. So if they'd been doing pulling the upstream stuff down that would have been a little bit better off. Who can tell me who wrote Pulse Audio? Aaron? His name is Leonard Pottering. He's the guy who did System D this past year. Yeah. So if you didn't like Pulse Audio, you probably don't like System D. I'm still trying to get used to System D. It was in 15, but it's now full-time in 16. It's a replacement for init and sysv, upstart, yeah. It looks it looks a little different. Is everything now? Pretty much everything. I thought they still had some stuff. They still have some build. They have a few for compatibility. Like, I know VirtualBox still uses initd. Yeah. But everything else that I've seen has mostly been rewritten. The scripts have been read. There's probably a handful of esoteric packages that aren't using it yet, but like Oracle. <laughs> yeah, 
O O E L Oracle Enterprise Linux. Well, there's that screen. Oh, you can restart your computer, or you can just restart your IP tables firewall. And how many people knew about the uh, Pulse Audio dash K command that will restart your Pulse Audio daemon for your session? So you don't have to like reboot or log out, stuff like that. So when you run it, the speaker will go away out of the corner and then it'll come back. So when I was doing this earlier today, it was not working very well. <laughs> I couldn't get it to see the other devices on my other laptop very annoying. Obviously you can hear that. And so that's local to that computer? This is this computer, right. So this little speaker is hooked up to this laptop, right? This is a little Logitech USB. I'm trying to remember the name. Well, we'll find out the name. So if I go over here to the output option, it says internal audio analog stereo, right? Well, down here you can see the netbook. That's the internal audio on here, as well as there's the Logitech Z205. Now, it's this. Or the internal audio. Sometimes it flakes out a little bit or takes a moment. So it's not 100%, but usually the stream will come back and resync itself. That's the laptop. That's not the sound issue because if I go back to my... The netbook is not all that powerful. The netbook is a pain in the ass because I'm running on a tickless kernel right now and the timings are really kind of messed up on it. It's a hack. The, the BIOS on the Toshiba NB305 doesn't work with the uh, hard drive controller very well. If I hold down the shift key, the hard drive light goes from this to full on. It's running. So it's like it's an interrupt issue, right? So there's two modes in the BIOS. There's HCI and compatibility mode for the SATA controller. So they suggest Test, you run the tickless mode kernel and put it in compatibility mode at the expense of your battery life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, I, I still get like four or five hours. I left this on in the kitchen when we went out shopping. We came back four hours later and went, Oh, hey, laptop was still on. And it said, You have 11% left in 10 minutes. So I shut it down. But but still, but you can do simultaneous. Like I said, it's the laptop. It's always had an issue with audio on this netbook. Sometimes if I start playing something on it, it just starts to go crazy. Let's pick another channel here. So you can adjust the output speed so it's like a couple bytes like time, so it's good. You don't have that much fine control over it. So I put a different channel on the netbook. Technically, I should be able to send the netbook over to the other laptop. Well, you can hardly hear it. See, it's the laptop is choking, unfortunately. Of course, unless it's everybody downloading wares here in the lab, who knows? <laughs> but yeah, if, as long as your machine's advertising it, you can kind of send it out wherever you want. 
your machine advertises the destination. Mm -hmm. You're not not you. You're gonna you kind of squinting your eyes. Oh, I didn't know if you were trying to think through something or how to try to form a question. No. Okay. Okay, questions. <laughs> so the management for all of this is at your local interface. Well, you kind of have to manage it on everyone, on every machine, because you want to be able to. You have to be able to broadcast to another machine. Right? So in other words, I have to set it up so that this laptop sees its devices. Right. But beyond that, uh, what uh, streams you send to, what destinations, what speakers, uh, that can vary. You manage that on your local machine. Mm -hmm. When you say, I want to send it to that machine. Now it says simultaneous output. Technically, that's every speaker on that remote box. Is there an, I don't know if there's an equivalent Windows, I mean Mac is the same. I guess the only thing for Windows is what, DLNA, which is very similar. But I haven't done any DLNA stuff. I know there's, that remote desktop can do something similar to this. What, you mean porting the audio over the remote desktop channel? Mm -hmm. Now my friend just got a new TV and it sees his computer over DLNA, so he could essentially go in there and play videos off of it. Oh. His PlayStation does the same thing. He doesn't have it open though, he has it all shut off. He doesn't care about stuff like that. I guess the only other option would be like um, play on to export the video stream to your device. So my plan is if I get enough of those little Logitech Bluetooth devices and plug what four of them into one computer and place them around the house, I could simultaneous do it to all four of the same Logitech devices and have a central controller off my Mythbox. Or if I'm watching a movie, I could walk across the house, still listen to the movie, come back, same thing. For pretty much any audio stream from the internet? Yeah, because I mean, I was streaming in and then streaming back out again. Because I was playing Soma FM. It goes through this central multiplexer and then back out to whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Or, what if you were doing a webcam on a desktop, like your firewall, right? You have a little firewall box, and you stick your webcam in it, and that's your little security. It uses motion. You know the program motion? You've heard of that before? It essentially takes a picture in predefined intervals, or it looks for changes in pixels and then captures the image. So you could put a USB microphone on the same box and port the audio somewhere else and record it locally. Um, there's a program. Where is that? Called Pulsecaster. Pulsecaster will allow you to choose any of your devices. So it'll even let me choose the uh, the netbook. and it will record that stream. Test. So that's the audio yes. level from the netbook. Do this. I don't know where the microphone is there, but yeah. So it's kind of nice that you can actually do input as well for that. So. Pulsecaster is used for the people who do um, podcasting. Mm -hmm. 
That's why it comes with the warning. You should tell people you're recording them. Yeah. Or another another thing you could do with it is um, if you're watching a live concert on YouTube, you're intercepting the audio stream and just writing it out to disc. Now, it's not. It doesn't appear to be in stereo from when I recorded it. Stuff off Ustream, but it works pretty good. Stereo is basically just two channels. Mm -hmm. But it only records in AUG. So keep that in mind. Wow, the levels are really higher for this laptop. Subject's voice. Choose your subject. I mean, it's a nice little program if you ever want to record anything. You could have a, a, a microphone and a speaker in your uh, den and a microphone and speaker in your uh, living room. And you could make your own cheap intercom in system. You know, your own what? You can make your own cheap intercom system. Yeah, you could do that. It's a lot of work to your whole house. I don't know how ra I don't know how Pulse Audio will work on the uh, <laughs> Raspberry Pi, <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, maybe it's already compiled. I'll to wait to find out. I mean, it'd be pretty cool. Do intercom system or um, you just walk from? You do the same thing with the webcams. Uh, Pulse Audio won't take the video, but um, do the same thing with webcams, and you can go from one room to the other and have a video conference. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> I would really like to play with the Android at Home stuff whenever they get that released. I, I prefer to have the guts in the device rather than having to install all these outlets and controls in your house. I don't know if you've seen that or not. They were demoing light bulbs last year that had the mesh networking, the Wi-Fi stuff built into the bulb. So you screw it in and you pair it up, and then you just control that bulb. Really? Yeah. I think it's a nice, you know, putting the whole idea of automating your house on its head because it's always been, okay, buy this outlet for $25, and you can control whatever's plugged into the outlet. Yeah, except that what if it needs to start up or shut down. Then you don't have that. Yeah. But if you do... Uh, the That's for wake on land and using, you know, going into suspend mode. Right. Which I probably should learn how to do. Are well, you going to need BIOS support and OS support? Both. Something with my Windows XP Home system and running on a computer 10 years old doesn't exactly work. So my future plans for this is to receive AirTunes, which means I have to borrow my MacBook from work. I don't have a Mac. And stream to multiple devices simultaneously. Because it always seems to be I can only choose a single endpoint and I think that's what um, this the multicast stuff's all about. That's what I want to look at next, so that I can just send us, you know, what is it? Uh, is it unicast to, the, to all the network? And then they can just grab a hold of that as it's broadcasting uh, over UDP. And you got it all. Because you yeah. notice Pulse Audio says TCP and not UDP. That's why it doesn't get the streams out of sync. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can have delay in UDP. There's no rebroadcast of the packets. I remembered something in my system. So. Did you want to talk? 
Oh, we're good. We're good. been looking at that when I was doing my Pogo Plug stuff or my Sparkle Show presentation. It doesn't work too bad. It looks very similar. Now, you can, uh, in the new beta version, you can do music and uh, they have a gallery feature. So you can oh, web dev. Stuff. Yeah, it does web dev. Um, but we've had some issues with it. With uh, you can't share folders. You can share files, but you can't share a whole folder. Interesting. Which is kind of a pain. Because so, if you have a large music collection, you right. have to do permissions yeah, on all of them, which would be just a pain. Yeah. yeah. You can do multiple users and define groups and then share stuff that way. Hmm. Uh, well, in that respect, it's similar to like Google Docs, where you're sharing a given file to an individual. So that sounds or like groups. Them, or groups. Or right. you can publish it like a Dropbox, the URL. Uh, but the URLs are much more obfuscated. So you're, you know, you so you're, essentially, you're running this on your own box. No, you run on a VPS instance somewhere if you want to yeah. rent some space and do it. Can you use alternate ports like <laughs> if you want to use your cable model? Yeah, you can use it. Well, it's web based. So mm -hmm. 80 or 443 or whatever port you want to put it on. I've got a demo server set up. Um, go to cloud.novia.net. Uh, HTTP, HTTPS, sorry. Ah! Uh -oh. oh no! I feel better if you do it. Yeah, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> What's that? Sam. There's nothing there! But you can do... Uh, Oh, it has actual contacts and calendar in it too. Yeah, that it's kind of nice. You can set up a you know user and then define a group if you want to. You can say uh, and oh, that's cool. You can do it right as you're adding the person. Got to make sure you hit return, otherwise it goose it up. I can make you an admin if I want to. Yeah, no. Uh, we'll do that. And then you can log in. You can add apps. And what they have. Oh. What storage capability? Yeah. Book. You can synchronize bookmarks, uh, and they're coming out with some uh, apps for Android and stuff like that for this. So. Maybe this will replace my Sparkle Share. Um, like you said, though, it's buggy. Okay. We had a problem Maybe not. We, where we f we shared a folder using WebDAV, and uh, somebody dropped a file in there. I could see it for a second, and then all the files went away for like a <laughs> minute, and then they came back. I was really strange. But, Maybe uh, it will replace Sparkle Share at a later date. Yeah. Well, this is the beta version of it. I'm not even running the most recent ver version of Sparkle Share. It's kind of nice if you want to do, it's a simple way to do calendars and like groups too if you want to do that. I haven't really played with it too much, but. It'd be good for it's a family simple. who's it's doing really stuff. simple to install. Mm. So, just set up some DAV settings in HTTP and then. Yeah, I'm trying to remember how much.
Are the apps oh, like set quarters like too. a plugin? You go in and you say install this app and yeah, I mean they they're plugins. So you wrote them. You can enable them as you go along if you want to turn it on. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I haven't tried. What is, what is the import I, I you know I don't know. Your own data. Mm -hmm. I guess if you're moving from one place to another. Yeah. Oh, it uses OpenID. That's kind of nice. Yeah. I like. I haven't played with that yet either. I'm not even sure I've seen Webfinger. Kind of sounds. I, uh, I don't know that much about it. <laughs> we were trying to figure out a, a, an alternative to using Dropbox for, you know, because we had some files that were more than our Dropbox allocation. Was. Wow. You know, I had Dropbox for about three months and I got rid of it. Yeah, I don't use it. After that little security issue, I kind of got yes. scared. So. Is everyone familiar with the Dropbox security issue? You should be? Okay. Styles fi files stored in Dropbox are used with a hash, right? That's how they retrieve the files and store the files. So if you upload a music file off Amazon and someone else uploads the same music file, there's only one copy. But you both have a pointer to it, right? Now, your important document A is stored up there with a certain hash, and somebody uploads a document B that has the same hash, but it's just not the same data. It'll see it, and then when they download it, they get your data. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. Uh, another inconvenient thing with uh, Dropbox is we have a client that they do, uh, well, they're an advertising mm -hmm. outfit, and uh, so they share files using Dropbox. Well, they publish the, the link, you know, they share the file, and they had one of their employees go uh, a little cuckoo on him. Well, he had all of those links. Oh, so he just started pulling everything. So the only way that they could take care of that was to take everything off the site, because you can't, if, if the links are permanent. Oh, so you can't turn them off. Yeah, once they're published. They're oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, and not only that, but the, you know, that hash is not very long, so you can guess it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is that in March their terms of service changed, so it says, you know, employees do not have your data, do not have, cannot look at your data. To employees are restricted from viewing your data. Right. Yeah, although they have the password logging with whatever they access the system by any path for a while. Yeah, that's what do you have? That's when I when I canceled my Dropbox. I was like, oh great, I'm I'm building all these people signing up and giving me free space. And I saw that and I went, well, let's get rid of this. So have you signed up for a Google Cloud account yet? Uh, no. Uh, -uh. I haven't booted into the Pogo Plug software in like six months. It's been running the old Linux on it, so. And I'm deciding whether to move it somewhere else because it doesn't need to sit under my desk. It just drives in a dumb machine. I want to probably, I should probably do the printer off of it. But, uh, I found out that I can't upgrade it. If I upgrade it, some of the libraries go away that it has dependencies on and it doesn't boot. It uses um, Pac Man to do all oh, the package the management. Line. Yeah. That was fun getting used to that. You know, they say about Arch, it's never the same twice. I've noticed. That and what what's with Mint getting all controversial recently? What what? Um, what, what Mint property document? Mint, 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 Mint. Uh, removing all the comments from his message board for that were bad comments. They don't like criticism. I noticed. <laughs> I don't know, I think this guy's in a big head now since he since he didn't go to uh, no three first. He's all of a sudden, oh, I've never won a distro watch. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, because he's still on two? Yeah, he was. I mean, now they're on three, but they've got the... Yeah, well, they got Gnome, which is the best thing, uh, thing. But they also got the extensions to... Uh, yeah, Gnome shell extensions, which make it look like more like two. You mean all this? Like I have mine? Yeah. Uh, ah! I think it's about time to try React OS again. Have you, have you seen what they've been doing lately? Mm-mm. That's their website. I'm amazed that they're already up to nine pages of these, because when, when I looked at it the first week, there was only one page. 
and then boom, this has only been up for about a month and uh, yeah, about a month. Go to reactos.org. Yeah, it's all style sheets and stuff. Uh, 313 is out now. It actually is looking not bad. Ooh, it runs OpenOffice 2. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I mean, a re of Windows is pretty impressive. Right? Yeah. The problem is it doesn't store all the drivers you'd like it to. I'm, I'm looking at adding another OS to the uh, collection this year. I, mean, I was looking at Haiku, but Haiku does not suspend more than shit. Mm. So if you're curious about... about that bar one? this site for GNOME 3. Darwin, we're getting access. We're getting you can actually install the extension just by doing this. Interesting. And now it says the percentage. So if you act, you can actually just go like this and it'll turn off. So this is all web-based. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> yeah. I still like easy. XFCE better. What? I still like XFCE better. Uh, thinking about switching over to FBW. I, I 95? Like I said uh, XFCE. I started so screwing around for you the XFCE stuff because I was looking to uh, back up yeah. my music library. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. And, I mean, I got terabytes of space uh, on that uh, server that I was running on. XFCE so, on the older laptop. Uh, and it's backed up. What is this? Last year. Why not? Uh, and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But yeah. once the file issues start popping up, I'm going to read it. This goes to show. show. Our sync still <laughs> comes out. <laughs> well, you know, oddly enough, it, it actually it, it stores the files on the local file system. How and if you delete a user, how all the files stay there. That's kind of oh. Huh. So I, I figured out that it's probably, probably not a problem. With. Using uh, might only be a problem yeah. if I want to access it. Yeah. You know, there's been the, the web interface. Mm -hmm. You could have this, right? EYEOS. What? EYEOS. It's a web interface. I don't remember if I. It's pretty interesting. I got a question for you. It's like, yes. I ask you. This is, uh, what We're you all using? questions right now, so. What are you using for the syslog stuff? Your, your Our syslog. For your remote stuff, though. You're, you had a web interface to use a SQL. Oh. Uh, Oh gosh. I'm kind of curious. I remember I right, can Yeah. If I remember right, you can actually try it on the computer. Whoops. Uh -oh. Really? Okay, no. I'm going to go this way then. I just haven't logged into it in a long time. What was it? What was that URL you just said? Unit dot XKC. Unit dot XKC. What? Is there a meteor shark? Yeah, I know what it is. Yes, tomorrow morning. morning. Is it? Log analyzer. That makes KCD dot XKC. That's, that's, yeah. So if you've already put, if you've already put the stuff in the MySQL table, this should read it. You know, it reads this. It's like the standard syslog uh, table format made by uh, Adis Khan. They're German. Yes. Just because they have products you pay for doesn't mean that that one's not. Yeah. You can still get that one for free. But so. yeah. Cool. They have event reporter, monitorware, win syslog. How much is one syslog? <laughs> For you, $39.95. Version 11 is free. Ah. Is a free download. Customers with 10 keys can contact our sales for upgrades. That's 
for a refund. Alright, that's oh, a, okay. for a refund. No, wait. If you have it. Upgrade insurance ID. Is that supposed to be upgrade assurance? <laughs> Order now. Oh, the download gives you a 30 day um, free trial. I think it's all, it doesn't give you the actual thing. I'm, I'm using event log to syslog on my stuff. And it just goes to a syslog box. When syslog basic. Seventy-nine dollars. <coughs> it's a bargain and a half the price. I don't even remember my password. <laughs> That's how long it's been. It's the password you use for everything. <laughs> the password? <laughs> I mean, you might be right. Okay. Hey. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so there's all the little color-coded stuff. Who got to fix my khaki problem? Ha ha! Sorry, you must have a TDY to run. Yeah, I know what that is. Okay. So there's me logging in. My desktop. It's nice that it has all these color coded things on oh, my wife's computer. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. She's plugging in her Kindle. Color. <laughs> She's probably working on books. on my plug box or a pogo plug. I still have faster answers. It's all uh, my sparkle share stuff. That's why there's so many log entries. Mac, it's me doing that. I also have Cacti on here. Have you seen Cacti? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't have this IP in the access list. We, uh, Cacti's like uh, MRTG, but a little better. It's, it's a network monitor oh. package. Well, I tell you though, it's you know, pain. To it is a pain there. Arse to set up. So I was trying to do um, um, my cable modem for the signal levels and stuff. I still haven't gotten that work. You uh, have to run the scraper script to scrape the stuff and convert it. Yeah, but is that SNMP? Well, it's disabled by Cox. Yeah. You can't so run SNMP. So you got to use Scraper to get all the yeah. way So it's, you got to write something to. You know, Chad got a, a, a surfboard 6121 last week because he had an older cable modem and he installed it. He was amazed because he jumped to 20 meg. Friday morning, he got 38 mm -hmm. in wow. his house. I hit 50 sometimes. Whew. Is that the power boost or the turbo boost? Yeah. But I mean, seriously, I need to, need to replace mine. 6121. It's like yeah, 79 bucks. Any of the Motorola's are better than the older ones. They're all better. I, have, I was I running a Toshiba. Like, no, those old oh, the PCX2200? Yeah. And uh, I had it for I don't know how long. And I was having problems with it. And they were like, well, you know, uh, you're only going to get three meg with that. I was like, what? No one sucks. <laughs> But they're probably charging you. Oh, they're charging the same amount. But. Yeah. Your, your bill stays the same. You just actually get a, a speed jump. Yeah, big time. Because I got a, I got a 5120 or 5121 51. from a friend of mine who was leaving town. And I was just like, boom, big difference. Now I should think about getting that 6121. Now it'll change my IP address when I do that. Um, you can fix that. You okay. store the MAC address, and you can change it on some of those. You mm -hmm. can make it 
It actually has two MAC addresses, one for the cable plant and one for the... Well, the 6121 is a four-channel bonding device, Aaron. That's why it, it's so amazing. 82 bucks? Is that Amazon? Yeah. yeah. It's a small price to pay for power. Well, since I've got a premium, since I'm paying premium price on my uh, thing, yeah, probably is a very small price to pay. Because they just, uh, when I said the grandfather, I mean, at that level, it's like, well, thanks. I have to perfectly build the grandfather. I wrote a IP watch script. So if my Ethernet device changes IPs from Cox, it will email me and then it will change my DNS entries. So I can still get to my home. Yeah, yeah my own. Uh, Linode, if you're using their DNS, you can get the keys so that you can update dynamically. You just have to get the right unique IDs in the right string. But it's it's pretty cool. If you have a sling box, it's awesome. A friend of mine has a sling box and he's gonna let me use it to catch shows that I have not been able to see because I no longer have cable. Did not watch Formula One at all last year. You're a heretic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they moved it, it's now on channel seventy eight. So that means it's right back down on basic cable like that. So if I stick a myth box at my mom's house, that's what I do. But she's gonna get rid of cable, so. My, see, the, the one place I know will never, ever, until they die, they'll never get rid of cable. My father will never do it. Because he's too used to channel surfing. They'll always have cable. Does he have a digital box? My mom was calling to cancel cable. Oh, we're going to give you 30 days of free digital cable. It's like, no. Uh, mom, sure. She going to call next month. Huh? Oh, good. She going to Hulu or DirecTV? She, I bought her a Roku. So, yeah, Hulu is an alternate. The only problem with Hulu Plus is there's still more content on Hulu than Hulu Plus. So, hey, I really liked Stargate, and I'd like to watch Stargate through my Roku. Oh, gosh, sorry. Yeah. It's not on Hulu Plus. Isn't there a little it's only on Hulu. Well, I think there's a channel that you can use in conjunction with another program on a Windows box. Yeah, Play On. Yeah. yeah. That means you have to have a Windows box. And I'm going to spend another 40 bucks. Port. What? Well, also, you got to do tech support for your mom. Yeah. Why isn't this working? I don't know. Don't Enough up. time with the machine as it is. What she has, is the speakers are all playing the same song now. <laughs> she has two cable modems at home. She has one for work and one for home. Uh, Allegiant puts cable modems in for all their people. You should tell her you're really uh, home one. Same. It's all VPN. You can't. Can't do much with it, unfortunately. Oh, well, sure. Well, you can, but so when's Chad going to do the open VPN thing? Well, I'm going to try to get him to do it next month because he just finished that stuff up yesterday. Cool. He just has one little thing to figure out, and then what's he got to figure out? Uh, some stuff wasn't routing like he expected it to, but that was. Um, well, thanks for watching. I'm going to stop the recording now.